Mark 8, 22 says, and he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man. Somebody say a blind man. Oh, God, you're going to get mad after we get through. Y'all laughing right now. Okay, unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man. Look at somebody say, he took the blind man. <laughs> See, they said it was two touches here, but we're going to let you know it was more than two in a minute. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, <laughs> uh huh, and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. Okay, and he looked up and said, I see men as trees. Say, I see men as trees. They skipped that too when they preached that to you, okay? We're going to go there. After that, he put his hands upon his eyes and made him look up. And he restored and saw every man clearly. Look at somebody he saw clearly. Uh-huh, that's our problem right there. We've got a solution. Ain't nobody seen clear. Oh, God. Father, we thank you. Bless us today. You already in here. We ask you to take us higher. Use this vessel, God. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds. Elevate us today after this word. Take us higher from this place to that place. You will get the glory once again in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say a blind date. Look at him again and say a blind date. You may have your seat. When you think of a blind date, it's something that a mutual friend sets up. And this mutual friend knows you and he knows the person that they set you up with in hopes that something would work out. That's a blind date. Yes, have y'all ever been on a blind date? Uh, typically, you don't know the person. You have no knowledge of what you're getting into. You don't know if this person is black or white. You don't know if this is your type. You don't even know if this person is a transgender. Oh, y'all. Yeah. I said a blind date. I'm talking about blindness now. I'm going somewhere with this. Here. You know anything, nothing about this person. It is a blind date. If we ever had blindness in this world, it is the date. Everything is so blind. If you just look over with me in the spiritual realm, blindness means darkness. There, no understanding. You just have no understanding at all. You're always missing the point because you cannot see clearly. Come on, somebody. Is that somebody today? Y'all ain't going to admit that, but that's all right. Come on, come on. That's all right. That's all right. I once was blind. I was saved for a long time, but I was still saving blind. I said I was still saving blind. I was going to church every Sunday, but I was blind, Pastor. I was going to church on Wednesday, Dr. Bay, but I was blind. I was coming up here speaking in tongues. Uh-oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. See, y'all think speaking in tongues make you see. That's a lie from hell, because he still can say, depart from me. I was laying hands on the sick, but I was blind. Come on, somebody. I was prophesying in that part, but I was blind. Y'all say, what are you talking about? Gifts and calls without repentance. Y'all ain't fat nothing. Open up your eyes and hear. So it was blind. We come to church blind. I ain't going to just fuss. I'm going to give you a solution. Y'all just wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. So this particular man, the scripture says, and Jesus, and he cometh to Bethsaida. Now let me give you some background on Bethsaida. Bethsaida was a place where Jesus performed miracles. That's the place outside of Galilee where he fed the 5,000. He did a lot of miracles. He chose some of his disciples from that place. I said he did a lot of miracles in Bethsaida. And yet some of them were still. I'm going to answer y'all questions today. That question y'all ask. We think this is the answer right here. I preached till I blew and black in the face. Green every color in the rainbow. And you still blind. Co-pastor, that's what's wrong. We blind. We can't see what you're talking about, Pastor. We don't understand, Dr. Maynard. Minister Maynard, we, we can't be faithful because we're blind. You might have to pull the car, but I'm going to have to make a beeline out of here to get out of here safely. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so, and he, Jesus coming through Bethsaida. And they bring a blind man unto him. And besought him to touch. Now, one thing about this blind man, we're we going to dissect, we're going to rip this apart. Yeah, I, I, let me just teach you, we're going to rip the scripture apart and we're going to exegete it here. They brought, now see, I like them friends. Them the kind of friends I want. 
I'm blind, and they're going to bring me to a solution. I'm blind. They know that I ain't going to talk about you. I ain't going to tell you down. I ain't going to tell you what your problem is. And not y'all know how we are, girl. You know she's been on that blind for years. Y'all know how we are. She's just falling in sin. And every time you turn around, they got a man. And what's wrong with them? Y'all know how we are. If you ain't going to bring no solution and come help me and encourage me, then keep your mouth closed. This man's friend, co-pastor, brought him to Jesus. I ain't going to bring you to an opinion, pastor. I'm not going to bring you to the psychologist because he's a mind regulator. I'm not going to bring you to the cardiologist because he's a heart fixer. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I'm not going to bring you to the psychologist. I'm going to bring you to Jesus because that's the only solution. We bringing our children to the psychologist and therapy and medicate, and all you're doing is medicate that demon. Go ahead and, 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 and bind them spirits and speak over them. That's what you need to do. Take them to Jesus. That's how you're going to get their eyes open. So they brought him to Jesus. And see, these kind of friends here, obviously they had a relationship with Jesus in order to know where to bring him. Y'all got the wrong kind of friend. Y'all want friends that's going to lie to you. Uh -huh. But I want somebody that's going to tell me the truth. I want somebody who's going to take me to the throne. Pastor Nate, that was wrong. No, you don't need to do that. But come on, let's pray about this here. See, I don't need no opinion. I don't need you to pacify me. I need you to tell me the truth. See, y'all got friends they scared of you because they think they're going to get, you're going to get mad at them when they say something. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing right there. Come on, let me go to this side here because y'all don't like me over there. Come on, somebody. You need somebody that's going to help you get better. You need somebody that's going to complete you and help you get to your destiny. That's the kind of friends this man had. He had a problem. They didn't sit there and just talk about him. They didn't tear him down. They didn't agree with him. They took him to the king, and his name was Jesus. You know that shirt too little for you. But your friend will say, girl, that's cute, and you about to pop out like a biscuit. They don't want to tell you. Oh. I'm talking to my friend that's going to tell you the truth. If you my friends, I need you to tell me, Dr. Man, that don't, that don't look good. Don't go out like that. Come on, somebody. And then when you hear your name in the street, then you start looking funny. I need these kind of friends. Bring me to Jesus. Come on, Pastor. I like how you do it. This is what the Word says. I know y'all get frustrated and get mad at I He don't understand. He's so insensitive. Because every time I go to him, he always saying, this is what the Word says. <laughs> you need to point me to that cross right there that's where I'm going to get my deliverance come on, you need to point me there I don't care how I'm feeling I don't care how mad I am I don't care how frustrated you I am amen, I'm going to tell you about Jesus because uh, he can soothe your fears uh, he can calm you, come on somebody yes sir so they brought him to Jesus and they besought him. Oh, see, I, that's why I love the people. They besought Jesus. That sounds like intercession to me. Yeah. Father, please touch him. I've seen you do miracles before. This man's been blind. I need you to touch my friend. You all got friends who are going to intercede for you right now? Do y'all have friends who are going to intercede for you? Are they talk about you with your issue? Do you have somebody who's going to get down and talk to God on your behalf? That's what his friends do. The scriptures say they besought, which means they begged him. They didn't just pray. They begged Jesus to heal this man. And he took the blind man by the hand. <laughs> now, y'all were taught that this was a two-stage miracle he touched him two times but in the scripture he touched him three times the first touch he took him by his hand and oh god see i ain't even got there yet <laughs> see how when y'all when you're on the court you can just finish the message okay he took him by his hand and the man was blind so what am i trying to say okay before i heal you man because see this is one of the few accounts where it was just only recorded in mark 
I think it was only two incidents. This was one where it was only recorded one time. And this is only one incident where Jesus did all this here to get it. He, I told you it's a blind date. You don't know what to expect. See, he, he didn't know all this was going to happen. He probably thought, okay, maybe if I go to him, you can just speak a word. See, y'all want to eat and run, but you don't want to do nothing. I told you, you got a responsibility to your healing. You got a responsibility to your prophecy. You can't just let me get healed and you ain't coming out yet. So Jesus took the man by his hand. Now what does that mean, Pastor Nate? Guess what? Jesus said, I want to establish a relationship with you. Right. Now we bond it. Y'all, he want to take you by your hand. Before I heal you, I don't just want to heal you, minister man. Because I might, you might just get healed and go back to what you were doing. But let me go ahead and establish something with you first. Before you get to, yeah, it was a blind day. You didn't know all this was going on, did you? Let me just get you by your hand. And the scripture says, <laughs> he took him by his hand and led him out of the... Y'all better come on out. You want God to do something for you, but you don't want to come out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now, this way it's going to get hard in here. Don't stop your amen now. Keep them going. I say you want God to heal you. You want God to deliver you, but you don't want to come out. You want God to touch your mama. You want God to touch your family, but you don't want to tell them to come out. Mama, I love you, but I can't pray for your lungs if you keep smoking, y'all. ain't going to say nothing like that. Jesus said, oh no, you, it ain't going to be that easy. I ain't going to die. He grabbed him by the hand and he let him out. See, you can't get nothing because of your environment. You can't get nothing because of the folks you hang around. And every time you date somebody and break up, you keep giving them a forward in a dress. Oh, I And Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. Because I told you about Bethsaida. I just gave you some background on Bethsaida. Jesus did all those miracles. They still was blind. Some of us still blind. And you know what God could do. The woman testified and told you what God could do. Some of you still walk around like you don't believe. That's, that's some blindness right there. We, we, I got a solution to it. I got a solution. I'm going to tell you why you act the way you act. Let me tell you why your blood pressure run up so high. See, because they're killing you. You don't even know it. You're too blind to see. See, the devil is deceptive. And he knows how to come in. And a lot of times he uses blind situations. Oh, Sometimes he uses blind situations because he knows you can't see. And you wonder why your high blood pressure run up. You wonder why you're having stroke. You wonder why you're having aneurysm. See, he ain't going to tell you that, but I'm exposing today. Eh, I ain't scared of him no how. We always fighting, so ain't nothing new. My God, help me today. Uh-huh. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of time. And when he spat on his eye. Now that's nasty. Lord. That is nasty. I'm like, Naaman, can you just, can I just go clean, get dipped in a clean water? Why you got to spit on me? Well, you know, back then they used roost blood and everything else, all kind of sap for blindness. And, uh. But I don't know why Jesus sped on him, really. Yeah, I know why. Thank you, Jose. I know why he sped on him. <laughs> okay, I was wondering why he sped on him. Because you got eyes and you can't see. Yeah. I say you got eyes, but you ain't. That sounds lukewarm to me. And in Revelation, what do you say? I'm going to spit you out. So Jesus was so frustrated, he had to just. Ah, oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. When Jesus sees you when you come before him, do you make him spit or does he accept your worship? Does he spit? He, disgusting. You just cussed last night. You want to come up here and declare my name right now. I told you anybody can praise, but anybody can't worship. You can't worship and do that stuff. He's going to spit out. I don't want God to spit on me. Oh, God, help me. Oh Lord. So is God spit you out? Is that why you sit there cold sometimes? I, I don't know why you asked me up here today. Okay, 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 okay. He spit on his eyes and he put his hands on, he asked him if he saw it all. And he looked up and said, 
I see man as trees. <laughs> and, 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 and let me tell you something. People overlooked that. That was the miracle right there. See, we just look at the physical thing. And one thing about it, you missing your miracle and God is working all the time. Because you're looking for it another way. He said, I see men as trees. Now, why did he say that? Now, Jesus could have just healed the man the first time. In fact, he could have just spoken. He could have been healed. Yeah. Obviously, there's a lesson here. I don't know why we look over that. Why did he allow the man to see men as trees? And obviously, the man had seen before because if he didn't, how he know what trees look like? Y'all ain't going to say that. See, you were seeing one time what happened to you that you went blind. You know the glory of God. Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? We sang the song, I was for blind, but now I see. The daytime is one, I once could see, but now I'm blind. It's backwards now. The church is going blind. Why are we not seeing? So he says, he says, Sister Lola, I see men as trees. Revelation, I see men, Dr. Maynard, as trees. See, I had to depend on somebody all my life. I was blind. I see men. Y'all going to catch a few minutes. I see men as trees. I wasn't stable. I couldn't do I see men as trees. Jesus said, I need you to see a tree. Why do I need to see a tree? Because a tree is solid. A tree is rooted. A tree is stable. That's oh y'all ain't saying nothing. God is calling for some stable people. You just can't get your healing and you ain't stable. You gotta be faithful. That's why he made him see tree. They don't tell you that. He said, I got too many faking folk in the church. They want their healing, but they want to go back and do it. Y'all don't want me to tell the truth like that. Come on. I need you to see truth before you get this healing. You ain't going to get this one here that You're going to have to put in a little work. I told you it was a blind date. <laughs> you didn't want to the net. You see, I see men in the street. And Minister Mayne, it's important because it's in the scripture. Pastor. Because not only do I want you to be solid, Sister Sheila, but I want you to be fruitful. We got, we got to get out of here, Mother Mary. We got to get out of here. You want to heal him, but you don't want to be fruitful. church you don't want to participate you don't want to participate in worship you don't want to participate in praise you don't want to help on any committee all you do is want your healing I told you your healing comes with the responsibility Jesus teaching this man ain't he? my God he taking him through some stuff took him by his hand I got my relationship with him that's the part I like that See, that's why you can say, Jesus, I go nuts. It don't take much for me. You don't have to prime me and say, Jesus, ten times. Because I got a relationship. That means I know what that, mean, that name means. I know what it does. So he establishes relationship. Then he allows him to see men as trees. We're going through the stages now. Y'all better put yourself in this man's shoes if you're blind. And you better tell your family member that needs something, the same message. Yeah. You better tell your friends and your co-worker. Yeah. And then we talked about his friends caring enough to take him to Jesus. Yeah. That's a good friend. That's the true friend. If you're going to take me to Jesus, I can pretty much trust you. We're talking about trust this morning. I need to know if you're going to talk about Jesus before I trust you. I need to know, I need to know everything you're going through, you're going to pump back to Jesus before I trust you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Rabba, Oh, God, I thank you. So he said, I see men as trees. Then he said, walking. 
walking. Guys, this is your favorite thing because it suggests it's a verb, it's something ongoing. Walking. We got too many Christians who are. I see men as trees walking. You doing something. Sister Sheila, you don't have to go that fast, but just walk. Sister Bet, I need you to move. I see you here today. You press. You walking. That's what God is calling. He needs somebody to keep walking. He needs somebody to keep moving. Amen. See, y'all let the hinders. Y'all let the hinders. Y'all let your husband and your wife make you mad and then you stop. See, your relationship is circumstantial. Oh, God, y'all ain't going to say nothing. You let your boss... You walking, but he make you mad, then you stop. Paul told you, but a press. I see men as trees walking. I don't care what they say about me, I'm going to walk. You call me everything but a child of God, I'm going to walk. Because I'm stable. I'm rooted. Come on, I done been called everything. You can act on threaten me. I always say, you can't threaten Lazarus with death. He's already died. I'm going to keep walking. Y'all ain't going to say nothing right there. You can say everything you want to say about me. I'm going to keep walking. You can talk about me like a dog. I'm going to keep walking. See, that's the kind of folk God calling right now. Was most impressed with his friend because the friend's the one started the fire and left him to Jesus. Jesus told him, Okay, I got this now, I can take it from here because he pulled him out. Let's me and you now. Okay, you didn't have a relationship with your friend. Okay, you can't go to heaven based on your friend. Come on, I got you now, it's me and you right now. Come on, somebody, you've been depending on other people for a long time. Now it's me and you right now. You better go somewhere and cry out between you and God. And you better stop telling everything to other folks uh, and stop trying to get answers from folks. Uh, and you better get in the face of God and cry out. Hey, God. And one thing I was so impressed about these friends because have y'all ever watched the movie Why Did I Get Married? I think Jill Scott was in there, right? Y'all remember that scene she got on the plane? And when she was too big, and she had to get up off of that plane, didn't she? See what happens when you want to sit down and just eat all the time? Uh oh. Okay, and not walk. Okay, but that's not my point. I ain't gonna hate on Jill. I love, you know, she good. Okay, but this is what this is my point. She had those friends on the plane. You would think when she drove and they reached their destination, somebody would have went with her. I don't care how much my ticket costs, you my friend. Yeah. And, and, and then when I went with her, I'd have say, if this is how girl talk. Girl, when we get back, we need to go to the gym so that won't happen again. Yeah. See, y'all don't want to tell her the truth. Because you don't want that to happen again. So when we get back home, let, let, and, I, and I know I'm five pounds, but I'm going to go on the diet with you. Yeah. See, that's a friend right there. Yeah. They go through the fire with you. That's what kind of friends this man here had. When we get back, we're going to go to the gym. Uh-huh. We're going to let the devil know this ain't going to happen again. See, you better learn how to fight the devil, somebody. Yeah. When the devil say you can't do it, you ought to go that much harder. I said, walk in. Yeah. But see, we got friends that's going to pacify us. Yeah. That ain't no help. I need you to hurt me sometime. Because when you get offended, that means I done told the truth. I hit a nerve. You might not admit it right now, but you'll come back later and say, I see what you're talking about. I got mad. I didn't want to hear the truth. That's the kind of friends you need. Then the scripture says here, and he put his hands. Wait a minute, wait, 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 before I go there. Let me go back to the slide again, because it's going to help somebody right here. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You know why you, they killing you? Because you're trying to fuss and explain things to a blind person. That's why you have a falling out with your family and friends all the time. That's why you don't get along. Now, I don't know if it's them or you, but somebody's blind. Somebody ain't seeing clearly. That's why you're bumping heads all the time. Now you're going home stressed and worried. You got high blood pressure. You're having an aneurysm. You're going home worrying about it. Come on, y'all. Y'all don't go through that. I'm trying to help us get delivered right now. You better keep walking. You trying to. So, Pastor, 
What's wrong with the church? Minister Maynard, what's wrong? Dr. Maynard, you trying to talk blind folk. I'm going to prove it in the scripture. Uh, pastor, co-pastor, you cannot open a blind person's eye. It takes Jesus. You could talk to you blue and black in the face, Minister Maynard. You cannot do nothing with them because they're in a blind place. I don't care how much you preach. If the scripture that he that have an ear, let him hear. They can have ears or not. I don't care how much you preach or talk to me. If they ain't got an ear to hear. Second Kings, somebody go to Second Kings 6 and 17. This is going to answer the question, right? I'm going to tell you what you need to do, how you resolve that problem. Second Kings 6 and 17. Somebody get that and read it. And, and, and if you've got another verse, you can read that, but I want you to read the King James too. Is that the scripture that say, Lord, open his eyes? Second Corinthians, I mean, Second Kings 6 and 17? Yes. Okay, somebody read that for me. This is, okay, this is the solution to blind people. You can't do nothing with them. But just like the man, just like the friends led the man to Jesus, this is parallel right here. Okay, read that for me, somebody. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Lord, I pray thee what? To do what? You know why we got it wrong? Because you trying to open it. You trying to make them see something they can't see. see. Open his eyes that he might see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. That's all I need right there. I know. Okay. He prayed. Elijah prayed and said, Lord, Dr. Maynard, open his eyes that he may see. And God did what? Open his eyes. Now we can talk. Now we can do business. Now we can go forth in ministry. Now I can go ahead and put leaders up here now. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Now I can put my praise team up here now. Because you can see. There's nothing worse than having a blind praise and worship leader. I don't care how much they sing. They still could be blind. Because, let me tell you something, there's nothing worse than having a blind musician. Because if he's blind, when the demons come in, what do you do? He can't play like David because he's blind. He don't know how to flow, he don't know how to set an atmosphere because he's blind. There's nothing worse than having a blind praise and worship leader because you want to get up this ain't trouble in my way. That ain't the time for that. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. You blind. Dr. Maynard. There's nothing worse than having a blind pastor or a blind minister up here preaching. You set yourself up for disaster. You blind. Jesus called them in one scripture. He said they're blind gods. That's the blind leading the blind. That's why you winded up in the ditch. Come on, somebody. Because we got blind folks leading blind folks. So, our prayer should change. If it's a disagreement... Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And then when you pray for the other person, you know what you need to do? Turn it back on yourself and say, Lord, if it's me, open my eyes. Come on. Come on. Okay, see, y'all don't want to take responsibility. See, y'all got quiet right there. You don't want to examine yourself. Lord, I don't know everything. I could be missing it. Open my eyes. See, that's the teachable spirit right there. <laughs> I could do something. Because, see, you ain't got pride when you can... I don't mind saying God open my eyes because you know what? I value my relationship with God more than I do my pride. See, y'all trying to hold on to that pride. I don't know why you're trying to do that because that's one thing God hates anyway. He said in the Proverbs, he said, that's one of the things I hate. It's an abomination. Don't hold on to that stuff if God hates that. You just dig it up deep a ditch for yourself. Let me close this here. Okay, my 20 minutes is up. Somebody give it praise right there. Come on, release your praise right there. Release your praise. Release your praise. I'm going to pray for another miracle. Because you know, because you open your mouth.